course, the Railers back home after a West Coast swing, and the Railers at the DCU Center for just the second time this season. Midweek special, a Halloween night special. Worcester taking on the Toledo Walleye. And the rail coming out ready for this one. First period, scoreless game. Toledo Parker, Toledo's Parker Reno just throws it on net. And Mike Borkowski chips in the rebound. One nothing Toledo. Best chance of the first period for Worcester. Kellen Jones feeding Chris Langhow. Langhow drawing the slashing penalty. Still in the first period, Mitch Gillum with the save, and then the rebound, Gillum. Highway robbery! He got a toe on it. Beautiful save by Gillum. Later in the period, Toledo. The one-timer right in front, and Gillum with another sweet save. Walleye continuing to pressure. Borkowski, one-timer, Gillum the save. Gillum on his game tonight. Ashton Rome, top of the slot, the wrister. Pat Nagel, gloves it and he hangs on. Second period, Railers on the power play. Wade Murphy with the blast. Woody Hudson jams home the rebound. Hudson's first goal is a member of the Railers. We're tied up at one. Toledo comes back, though, and the Walleye win it tonight. 3-2 is your final. Well, the Assumption football team just keeps rolling right along. Assumption beats Stonehill 68 to nothing over the weekend. And now the Hounds moving up in the national polls. They're now ranked 10th in the country. Assumption has AIC this weekend and in football each week is its own season. Irrelevant. If we lose this game and we lose next week we're probably sitting at home. So what we control is what we can control and that's this week coming up and that's how it seems to be every single week when we come out here. That's the cool thing about football but also the bad thing about football. So if you don't do well you have a whole week to kind of dwell on it and as coaches you're hoping that you're getting better uh, and sometimes it's not a good thing either if you play really well because it's a whole week until you play again. You know so that's the interesting part about football is that you only have one shot at it each week and, and in the end you know, you only ha are guaranteed 10 of them in the end. So it's one of those things that you got to make the most of it. You got to stay consistent to the process. We got to understand what we're trying to do day in and day out and make sure we hold each other accountable every single day we step out there. All right, so Assumption's going to have AIC this coming weekend. The Hounds offense is in high gear. They've scored in the 50s four times and now in the 60s once. Just an incredible year for Assumption, and it continues. Division II state finals, boys golf at high fields. Grafton's Matt Lukasevich on the par three second, dropping the par putt home. Ty Dupree, teammate from Grafton, his tee shot on the second. Dupree getting into it, beautiful touch. Pin high, right side of the green. Dupree with a birdie putt. Just missing. Gives it a good run, though. He would par the hole. Quabbin's Brody Coughlin. He was the medalist in the districts. Coughlin with a sweet swing. His approach shot on the par 4 10th, and he sticks it. Coughlin dropping the birdie putt. He shot an 82. Also on the 10th, Bay Path's number one golfer, John Strazala. Draining the par putt shot at 89 today. Bartlett's Alex Heatherman. Playing hurt. Had a bloody nose. So he's got the tissue up there to stop the bleeder. Heatherman, birdie putt. Good run. He would bogey the hole. Took a good shot at it, though. Nitmuck's Colin Casamento. Nitmuck was the Central Mass champs. Casamento on the 18th, putting for birdie. Runs it past. He shot at 81, though. Second best of the Central Mass kids today. Nipmuc finishes third, and Hopkinton is your state champs today. Good weather, though, for golf. Normally, this time of year, they sometimes get frost delays, or the kids are out there literally with winter hats and gloves and heavy, heavy uh, sweatshirts. They didn't need that today, so it was nice. I know. Can you believe it's already November oh, tomorrow? Oh, it's crazy. Unbelievable. We've been but, stealing money in this fall for the, the way the weather has been. We have. And I mean, speaking of a good fall, we got to talk about Assumption. Unbelievable. Yeah. What do you think attributes to that? I mean, other than good coaching and obviously good players. Well, the biggest thing is their depth because, like Saturday, they beat Stonehill 68 to nothing using their second and third quarterback, their fourth and fifth running back, their second and third safety. I mean, they've had injuries all over the map. 
and it's next man up philosophy, but they build that depth because they compete so hard in practice. That's the biggest key is the way they practice and the way these coaches coaches have the kids practicing and the way the kids practice. Their freshman class has been real competitive, mm -hmm. stepping right in to either starting roles, backup roles, or special teams roles. So now the whole depth is built with the whole team. But these kids are expecting to win, and they're pushing the juniors and seniors for playing time. And they honestly, and this is the way they want it to be, they want the hardest days of the week to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then when they play on Saturday or Friday night, they want that to seem easy compared to what was going against each other in practice all week. Good. Good, good it's a great strategy. philosophy, yeah. Absolutely. What are they, the Patriots? <laughs> I, I think, you know what? <laughs> they're the Patriots right now of Division II football. That's the way they're playing right now. Take they're the, the team to beat. And they're going, I mean, they're ranked 10th in the country. These teams that are in, like, the top five Division II, you're talking about teams that are full scholarship, yeah. teams that have a ton of Division I transfers. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with Assumption. It's it's crazy what they've done. How they've done it is amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, good for them. I'm excited to see them yeah, continue fun. and play it's off fun time to and watch. everything. Oh, God. And then, you know, they've been to the NCAAs two years in a row. It looks like they're going to be primed. They won't like me to say that because yeah. I don't want to jinx it. But <laughs> looks like they're primed for another run, a third straight trip to the NCAAs. It's incredible what they've done and just how they've built that program, which was never a winning program. And now to have the excitement and the buzz is all around campus, like the kids, the parents, oh, sure. the alums. The camaraderie. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Worcester News tonight. For Kevin Shea, I'm Anna Botari. Happy Halloween. We'll see you tomorrow.